Previously, we proved the following fact. So if you've got a field K, and we're considering the polynomial ring over that field K called K adjoin X, then P of X in K of X is irreducible. We gave a definition for that earlier. If and only if K adjoin X mod um, the ideal generated by P of X is a field. In other words, this quotient ring is a field. Okay, and this actually gives us a really nice way of creating new fields from old fields. And in fact, this is the general strategy for constructing all finite fields. And that's usually that's something that happens a little bit later in such a course, but we're gonna look at an example right now. Okay, so let's consider the field Z2 and the polynomial ring over that field Z2 adjoin X. And then the next thing that we want to notice is that x squared plus x plus 1 inside of z2 adjoin x is irreducible. And then how do we know that? Well, let's say it did factor, then it would have to factor into two linear factors, but those linear factors would be related to the roots. But notice that the only roots that this thing can have are 0 and 1 because those are the only elements inside Z2. But if you plug 0 into this, you get 1. And then if you plug 1 into this, you get 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3, but that's the same thing as 1 in Z2. So this thing has no roots inside of Z2, so that means it's irreducible inside of Z2. But what this tells us is that Z2 adjoin X mod this polynomial is a field. Great. And then how many elements will this field have? Well, we'll see that it'll have four elements. So notice that things inside of this object look like cosets. So elements in here look like this. They look like f of x plus this ideal x squared plus x plus 1. So let's list some elements inside here. Well, so notice we could have uh, 0 plus x squared plus x plus 1. So let's just rename this thing like 0. Then we could have 1 plus x squared plus x plus 1. And so we could go ahead and rename that thing just 1. And then we could also have um, x plus x squared plus x plus 1. So we could go ahead and rename this thing alpha. And then finally, we could have x plus 1 plus x squared plus x plus 1. And we could go ahead and rename that thing um, alpha plus 1. And you might say, well, what about higher powers of x? Well, it turns out that higher powers of x are not needed. Let's look at x squared plus the ideal x squared plus x plus 1. Well, notice we can rewrite x squared in the following way. So x squared is going to be the same thing as um, x squared plus x x squared plus x plus 1 plus the ideal x squared plus x plus 1. So notice this guy was in the ideal, so I can bring that out because that's essentially equal to 0 in this quotient ring. But now we can write um, x squared plus x squared is 2x squared, but that's just 0. So that means that this thing is really just equal to x plus 1 plus the ideal x squared plus x plus 1. Great. Using all of this, we can re envision this field in the following way. So we can re envision this as Z2 adjoin alpha, where alpha satisfies this following rule x, well, alpha squared equals alpha plus 1. Notice we're thinking of alpha is the root of this polynomial that we're modding out by, x squared plus x plus 1. And so what that tells us is that alpha squared plus alpha plus 1 equals 0, but that tells us that alpha squared is negative alpha minus 1, but since we're in Z2, we have alpha plus 1. And so in other words, we can represent this set in the following way. So let's see, Z2 adjoin alpha is equal to all combinations A plus B alpha, where A and B are in Z2, and alpha squared equals alpha plus 1. Great. 
So using that rule, um, we can make an addition and multiplication table for Z2 adjoint alpha to show that it is in fact a field of order four. Because notice, how do we know there are four elements? Well, we have two choices for each of these inputs. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll see that. So on the last board, we argued that we can replace the cosets in this quotient ring by these kind of elements right here, um, where we have A plus B alpha, where A and B are in Z2, and then alpha squared equals alpha plus one, given that we're thinking of alpha as being the root of this polynomial. Okay, so we know that this object is a field by the fact that we proved that general result before, and then this object is just another way of writing this guy, so that means that this one is also a field. So let's get a feel for what it looks like by making an addition addition and multiplication table. So an addition table we'll do first. So let's see, we've got four elements. So we have zero, one, um, alpha and alpha plus one, zero, one, alpha and alpha plus one. So let's see what we get. Obviously when we add zero, that's the additive identity, so nothing changes here. Then, we, then when we add by one, we'll get one plus one is two, which is zero. This will be alpha plus one. Alpha plus two is just gonna be alpha because two is zero. Great, and then we have alpha plus one, alpha. Then alpha plus alpha is two alpha, which is zero. This is gonna give us one. This is gonna give us one, and this is gonna give us zero. Notice that the diagonal is all zeros, and that's because the characteristic of this field is two. Notice if you add any element to itself, you get zero, and that's the same thing as having characteristic of two. Okay, now let's go ahead and make a multiplication table. Okay, so we'll have the same uh, kind of setup. So we need zero, one, alpha, alpha plus one, zero, one, alpha, alpha plus one. So let's see what we get for that. Multiplying by zero obviously gives us zero in all of the spots. Multiplying by one, that's the multiplicative identity, so that's not gonna change anything. Um, so we have alpha, alpha plus one. Great, and now multiplying by alpha, notice alpha times alpha is alpha squared, but we know that has the rule that this is alpha plus one. Alpha times alpha plus one is going to be um, alpha squared plus one, but notice alpha squared is alpha plus one, so that's going to be alpha plus alpha plus one, so in other words, that's gonna be one, so that makes this one as well. And then alpha plus one times alpha plus one, well, let's just go ahead and work that out down here for fun. So that's going to be equal to alpha squared plus two alpha plus one. Notice alpha squared is equal to alpha plus one and two alpha is equal to zero. So we have alpha plus one plus one. The one plus one is zero. So in other words, we get an alpha right here. So there we've got our addition and our multiplication table for Z2 join alpha. In other words, this uh, quotient ring which forms a field, and I should say that we're not gonna prove this, but um, all, field, all finite fields of a given order are isomorphic, and so sometimes this is called F sub uh, two squared or F sub four, the finite field of order four. I'm gonna clean up the board and then I'm gonna present a fact and then we'll be done. So now we're gonna present a couple of facts that usually come later in an abstract algebra course or maybe a second semester of an abstract algebra course, um, but it really builds off of this stuff we've been doing with polynomials and this example that we just did with a field of order four. And so first off, every finite field is of order P to the R for some prime P and also they are all of characteristic P, so they're all characteristic some prime. So that means the characteristic two fields have order two, four, eight, 16, so on and so forth. The characteristic three fields have order three, nine, 27, 81, and so on and so forth. And you can do that for any prime. The next thing to notice is that there is only one finite field up to isomorphism of any given order. So let's say you give me the order 64. Well, there's only one field of order 64. Of order 81, there's only one field of order 81. Order 125, again, only one field of order 125. And generally, you call that field F sub PR. Great. 
Um, now the next thing is how do you construct F sub P R? In other words, how do you construct that field of order P to the R? Well, you'll want to find an irreducible polynomial of degree R over uh, P of X. Sorry, over ZP adjoin X. So in other words, take the field ZP and then find the polynomial ring with entries in that field. Find a polynomial f of x that's degree r and it's irreducible. So that tells you that uh, when you take the quotient, it's going to be a field. But then by some observations involving linear algebra, that's going to show you that it is a field of order p to the r. And so that's exactly what you do here. So f sub p r is isomorphic to zpx mod this ideal generated by this polynomial. Okay, so this is a good place to stop.